Hello and welcome back to the Siri Poetry Library. I'm your host, Dan Siri, here reading a year one poem <laughs> called Lost Highway, and we'll discuss it afterwards. I'm a mess, I just got out of work, so. We traveled many nights, many miles on our lost highway. She'll wait all night for the X, but he'd rather sleep. Indifference looms over as we see others in love, see one strong enough to live without it, but we couldn't live without love, could we? Our souls see the world so clearly, a burden to bear. People close to us wonder why we just can't choose to be happy. Sometimes I wish we could be like them and not feel so deeply. To feel everything, to deny nothing, is almost worth the suffering when we at last find joy. I drive to see her with two cups of tea, reflecting on the year. We fought so many battles in many cities, all new scars on our hearts, but somehow we're still here. A knight and his queen stand strong on their squares, ready for the next move. I ponder quiet moments, fleeting breaths of peace. There was that diner in Philly and a thrift store. We sat on an old couch. I was trying to find the right words. I'm still trying. A good friend, I stand by seeing a line of boys who would be king. Love when they feel like it. Comfort her at their convenience. She met someone, says he's the one. So I wander still, daydreaming of her and I being us. We wouldn't be rich, wouldn't live in a castle, no traveling other than our road trips. But our hearts would be safe, no need in mourning, no seeking love. It would be in our souls upon waking at dawn in the day and under the stars as we drifted into peaceful sleep. No, we won't have that, but we'll always have the lost highway. December 24th, 2012. Year one poem. <laughs> I started writing poetry January of 2012. Uh, mostly ones like this, love poems. Yeah, this is really basically not just from my perspective, but this is for all people that are friend zone, men or women, either one, where you care so much for someone and it's just not going to work out and they just can't see what you see and you can't see what they see, what they're looking for. So it's just this very weird situation in life. But um, it was quite a year, 2012, uh, if I can remember. It's so long ago now, eight years. And after all that's happened, especially just in this year alone, it's hard to go back and revisit those days. But, you know, poetry in a way is a diary or any artistic endeavor, whether it be painting, cinema, uh, music. It's basically, at the end of the day, a diary of who you were at that time. And when I read this, I kind of chuckle a little inside because, you know, the things that were so important to you once or were everything to you at one time, the people that were everything to you, you look back and you're like, well, you know, it was a different time. It was just a weird situation, you know. And it was what you felt then and what you believed then. And sometimes these things never change. And sometimes there's a part of you that looks back and there's a little, uh, like a lighting of a candle. One time that candle was a great raging fire. But now you look back uh, on the past and these things fade away little by little. There's always a remembrance and there's always a little bit of reverence for these you know, past lives and past loves, because it is like a previous incarnation. Like, I don't even remember being the person who wrote this, but I did once. This was me eight years ago. It's not me now, but that's the beauty of art, is that it's basically, it tells you the story of your own life in what you create. Um, 
everything you do as an artist is a recollection of who you were and what you aspired to be at a particular time and what you desired about because basically we write what we want and what we know basically pretty much the way we want to see the world even if you create a novel you're creating within the framework of that piece you're creating what you want to see and what you believe and what you feel and what you love and what you hate and all of it is in there but um yeah lost highway and if you as you can see extensive rewrites crossed out whole sections because again you find better ways to say things and i believe don't memorize and always rewrite always because you'll find brand new ways to say what you were too foolish and childish to say at least in your artistic life you know at this point i was a baby to poetry now i'm just beginning to get into the i'd say the adolescent phase of poetry because i've been writing it for eight years but this was when i was a child at poetry and i think you know there was moments of cleverness when you're a kid but when you become an adult you have a different perspective on things and you find new ways to say things that's why many artists go back filmmakers painters musicians and they rework their previous uh efforts because they just find better ways to do it or at least it's better than them and i'm all for that i'm completely 100 percent all for that however if something is published and is in the public memory I do like to have as many versions as possible. Like, I like having three versions of Apocalypse Now. I like having a couple of versions of uh, Star Wars and E.T. and these things. Just to see if you like a certain version more than something else. Because sometimes the artist can be wrong. Sometimes my rewrites probably aren't a good idea. And maybe I should have left it as it was in 2012. Maybe I said it better then. I mean, I don't think I did. And a lot of these artists that rework their films or their poems or whatnot, they think they find better ways to say it. They could be wrong. And again, once something is published, I believe in keeping every version available possible. Like I love having five versions of uh, Blade Runner, for instance. And it's funny that I should mention Blade Runner because if you stay tuned to the channel, there should be a Blade Runner poem coming up soon. So stay tuned, and this is Ripley, last survivor of the Nostromo, signing off.